My name is Calliope, daughter of the sky god Zeus, and muse of much renown. Sit here, at my perfumed feet, as my poem unfolds before you, an epic that springs from the depths of the sea and finds its end upon strange shores. For this is your story, the story of Argonus, son of Argus the shipbuilder and friend to Jason the hero. Our tale begins like many a sailor's story before it, with tragedy and a lilting song that carries from one dark wave to the next. Awaken. Book One, The Blight. A frozen scream is etched upon the face of bewitched Typhus, helmsman of the Argo. Never again shall he foretell the rising of black waves. The death that haunts this isle did not spare even a child from its sorcerous wrath. This statue is of Amphitrite, Queen of the Sea. Sadly, the goddess did little to hinder the decimation that litters these rocky shallows. The chalky fleece of this ewe is wanting for a shearer's work. This wild sheep appears interested in nothing more than the grasses that grow upon this beach. This statue would appear newly struck, as the salt of the sea has yet to assail its stone. This hound was not spared the fate that befell the other inhabitants of this isle. Tis naught but a fisherman's net, set so the west winds can reach its sodden threads.
Aetes Palamonius, son of Olenane Lernus, whose bodily frame and valor no man could match. This child was not struck down by mortal ills, but surely by something that is beyond this world. Long, twisted necks adorn the pitted surface of this stone tablet. This young woman, most likely a temple worshiper, seems to have been frozen in time. An unseen hand forces Argonus from his feet and into a dense thicket skirting the stone path. A soothing voice murmurs in his ear as the sailor witnesses the passage of things only spoken of in tall tales, and even then, in whispers. Be quiet for but a moment, the voice counsels. Once the otherworldly creatures fade from sight, Argonus pulls himself from the dust and gazes skyward. Before him, held aloft, is a handsome woman, replete with glory and power. How many times must fair Athena save one man? The immortal asks, her head tilted with uncommon grace, her eyes soft. Before words can form on Argonus's lips, she continues. Tis not a query to be answered so readily, sailor of the Argo. Shadows gather, she says. There is a blight upon this isle. Have you not seen its handiwork? The flesh of your companions no longer flesh. Their bones, that of the earth. The woman's eyes drop. I fear my own hand may have set these dire events into motion. For this, I will make amends. But know well. Many of your brethren yet live, for I have seen them with my own eyes. Find them, Argonus of Crete, and as I did for your father before you, I shall provide a boat and passage from this isle. You have the word of fair Athena. Not a heartbeat later, the goddess is gone and breath gladly returns to the sailor's lungs. The statue is certainly that of the hero, Oileus, peerless in courage and strong in spirit. Tis Phalerus of the Ashen Spear. His father, great Alcon, shall never again welcome home his prodigal son. One can become extremely ill, 
consuming the berries from this black nightshade. No doubt struck by the hand of an Argonaut, the head of the Hydra lies lifeless, its flesh still warm to the touch. No doubt struck by the hand of an Argonaut, the head of the Hydra lies lifeless, its flesh still warm to the touch. No doubt struck by the hand of an Argonaut, Paul Canthus, son of Abbas. Never was there a sailor more eager to quest or raise weapons against a common foe. It is said that he was granted an enchanted weapon from Ares himself. Hail strong Erebotes, the son of Iris, skilled in the seer's art of seeing between the mortal coil and the dark veil beyond. Calais was a welcome comrade and could fashion ships to make trial of the seas with heavy oars. Tenorus has lost a great son in Euphemus. He was the most swift-footed of men and was wont to skim the swell of endless seas. Tis the visage of strong Asterius, son of Hipparasius, who stood two score of men against the Gagenes on the land of the Dolionis. If not for its stone plight, this Methosian Hydra is like the one said to have been brought low by Heracles during his twelve labors. This wayfarer's spear is both a formidable weapon and a sailor's crutch. No doubt struck by the hand of an Argonaut, the head of the Hydra lies lifeless, its flesh still warm to the touch. No doubt struck by the hand of an Argonaut, the head of the Hydra lies lifeless, its flesh still warm to the touch.
While the tip of this spear may no longer be fit for battle, it may still serve another purpose, albeit one more pedestrian. While the tip of this spear may no longer be fit for battle, it may still serve another purpose, albeit one more pedestrian. Whether spooked or merely provoked, the stallion launches itself from the cliffside before mighty wings carry it far above the awestruck sailor below. Nearly 200 men high, the massive bronze soldier stands silent, enthralled by the euphonious song rising from below. A semblance of Pacify, the immortal daughter of the sun god Helios, guards the entrance into this mountain. This statue is of Minos, the king of Crete and son of Zeus and Europa. Massive stone doors are cradled by the sheer cliff face. Though salty mists shroud their form, there is no denying the women upon the rocks. Or even from here, the lure of the siren's song is strong. Nearly 200 men high, the massive bronze soldier stands silent, enthralled by the euphonious song rising from below. While man may have birthed this massive sculpture from the isle's bedrock, deep waters now embrace it as their own. Cracked and splintered, this wooden plank will serve a vessel no more. Tis the faithful Argo, her weathered hull rent, her stalwart crew scattered, dead or lost to the endless sea. A faint melody can be heard as the sea wind blows past her figurehead. This statue, if it could be called thus, is that of Hylas, a man whose hands brought ore to water not but a day ago. Acastus, the son of King Peleus and a lifelong consort, reaches in vain his sun-baked flesh, now that of ashen stone.
The head of a once giant stone statue lies half hidden in tall grass and underbrush. Long, twisted necks adorn the pitted surface of this stone tablet. The creature depicted on this mosaic has multiple heads and a scaled hide. No doubt struck by the hand of an Argonaut, the head of the Hydra lies lifeless, its flesh still warm to the touch. This plank is bleached and split from the sun. This plank is bleached and split from the sun. This owl seems unaware of its preternatural perch and unconcerned with the plight of a shipwrecked sailor. More than a piece of driftwood, this plank was once surely bound to a mighty ship. The odd shape of this blue-gray stone gives nary a hint of its purpose. Full leaves, like those found on apple or fig trees, are painstakingly inlaid into this rough piece of limestone.
the sea has made it difficult to discern whether this plank is pine, cypress, or oak. May these words recount the strange toils of Argonus, chronicler and maker of maps, washed up on strange shores and awakened by the voice of a goddess. And what brought me thus, kneeling upon white sands? Twas a fell song, carried from one wave to the next, until it met the faithful Argo and pulled her deep, shattering both bow and stern. Now she lies broken, amongst sharp rocks, never again to bring men to great adventure. Oh, and what adventures! All that could have been and now will never be. They are as foam upon pounding surf. The fickle gods, the very ones to whom this sailor offered tribute, have scorned us, forsaken us without rebuke or counsel. They have cast me upon bedeviled sod and set horrors before my eyes. My brethren, the fabled Argonauts, are no more. Men I supped with just a day hands are now naught but pallid and sorcelled stone to be ravaged by wind and storm. Indeed, I am a man of many sorrows, but shall I not press onward? For good or ill, mayhap the blight that has taken these brave men has not overcome all. Though my body is weary, my brow feverish, I shall not abandon them. So says Argonus, son of the shipbuilder Argus. An impossible horse with snow white. Whether spooked or merely provoked, the stallion launches itself from the cliffside before mighty wings carry it far above the awestruck sailor below. While it appears to be chiseled from the same rock, this stone is set apart from the great statue that cradles it. Small ticks, like droplets of water, emanate from within this stone pedestal. The stone drops neatly into the groove, and the great eye slowly moves, revealing a hidden passageway 